It's officially November, and um, we, we all know what that means. Of course, I won't say that word, um, not in front of these guys, but if you're interested in this fascinating fowl, uh, stay tuned because I'm gonna tell the story of the turkey. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank our sponsors. The Garden Home blog is made possible by Gilbert H. Wild & Son, who've been growing beautiful perennials since 1885. Ralston Family Farms, a farm family producing delicious rice for your table. First Community Bank, whose heart is in the community, as well as Sun Patience, Super Cal Petunias, and Dragon's Breath Celosia, and Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. Check out my website to learn more about the brands we love. Well, here at Moss Mountain Farm, many of you know we conserve poultry, and one of the most important members of the poultry family is the turkey. And uh, there's several different colors of turkey here. They're all the same species, uh, but they come in different colors. Um, and these all you'll notice, if you look closely, you'll see they have a double yellow band on their leg. Um, that, this means that the birds were hatched in, in, in this particular year. and We try to ban them so we know their age. But you'll see a range of, of varieties in here. For instance, the classic ones, or the bronze, um, there's one up there in the front uh, with a sheen of bronze on them. That's where they get their name. It's probably the foundational breed of all the turkey colors. Uh, now here you'll see the, there's some bronze. Uh, you can see the very, very shiny ones that have a bronze-like feathering on them, like this big boy here. Uh, that's a classic bronze. And at maturity, they'll weigh about 36 pounds. Um, and then there's the slate. You can see here is another color that we keep. That's a young tom. And you can see some chocolate. This is a chocolate here. You can see the beautiful sort of mocha color of, of that one. Now what we do here is, is we, we try to keep these birds long enough so we can size them up so we can pick out the breeders for next year. So for instance, this is a very good, a very good chocolate that's coming up this way with a big front on him. That's a, that's a keeper right there. Um, and we look for hens. For instance, this bronze hen is very small compared to this bronze hen. You see the size difference. Much broader back on this, this girl um, and a, much more of a front so she'll be a better breeder than the other one. So what we do is we go through these and we look for what are the, what are the best qualities for perpetuating these based on the standard, the standard of perfection, which was set out by the APA, the American Poultry Association, beginning in 1874. Now over here, you'll see some white ones, which is uh, really a, a flock of, of uh, Royal Palm Toms. These are extra toms that we have, and we're evaluating those to see which are the largest, which have the best color pattern on those. Um, they're, they're white and black with a little bit of gray, very striking turkey, um, but one of the smaller ones. And what we're doing with all of these is really trying to breed for size. There's so few turkey breeders anymore that the genetic pools have become smaller. And so there's fewer genetics of these great heritage birds around. What we're conserving here include the colors of Narragansett. And many of these names come from um, really where they're, they were developed or identified or bred. So the Narragansett is, as you might guess, uh, Rhode Island, Narragansett Bay. And then the Bourbon Red, which has a beautiful reddish color with white primary tail feathers and white wing feathers. Uh, the bourbon red came from Bourbon County, Kentucky. We've already talked about the bronze, which is sort of the foundational turkey. It looks very much like the wild type and the largest of all the colors. Then we have Spanish black, um, which is a very old color indeed. Columbus went to America three times and brought back on the last two trips turkeys. And it's believed that many of those were largely black in color. And then a mutation of the black is the slate 
blue, which has a beautiful sort of gray color to it, striking with the red heads on these turkeys. Now, we also keep the, the, the chocolate, which is one that was raised in the South in the 19th century um, in several Southern states. And that one's rarely seen these days. And so we're trying to really cultivate it and bring it back. So that's about all the colors that we can manage here. There are a lot of other colors of turkeys, but the ones that I've cited are among those that are set out in the standard and are recognized by the American Poultry Association. Um, now, it takes, uh, the turkeys start laying typically in April here, um, uh, sometimes late March. Uh, they lay a speckled egg and those eggs are set in an incubator and it takes 28 days to hatch a turkey from the time it's set until it pops out of the shell. And these birds were hatched about, well, uh, May, let's say mid-May. So you can see they grow very quickly. And it's this time of year we're selecting the breeders for the next year. So there's gonna be some lucky ones here and there's gonna be some rather unlucky ones because yes, the ones that don't make the cut either go to other breeders who are trying to work with them or they end up in what we say the noodle pot around here. So they'll uh, end up on the table and they're quite delicious. I hope they're not hearing this. I'm not in earshot for them. Now, the other thing about the turkey, which is so interesting, is the head, the caruncle. That's what all that red fleshy color is. Um, and when they're feeling sort of amorous, uh, the head turns very red and you can see the toms are constantly strutting to attract the hens and also to sort of go up against other toms because they're constantly vying for the hierarchy, the pecking order as it were. And then when they're um, in, in defense mode, when they're fighting, sometimes the head goes blue to white. So the blood rushes out of the head and they go in defense mode and get into get into fights. But by and large, when they're raised together like this, they get along pretty well. And um, so it's, it's nice to see them uh, out and about, and we love them on pasture. That's the way we raise them here. Uh, they get locked up at night because predators are always after them. And we like to pasture them during the day and they run out here on this Bermuda uh, pasture, which is a high protein grass. Uh, they feed on that and then we have a turkey ration that we give them uh, a starter as young a baby turkey is called a poult and that poult is uh, raised on a starter a high protein starter uh, up until it's uh, almost a you know, good size uh, sort of middle age and we turn them loose on grass and then change their diet to something uh, slightly different and um, and you can see they mature quite beautifully a lot of people have um, odd sort of notions about turkeys, but most people who have opinions don't know anything about them. You probably know people like that. Um, but turkeys really aren't stupid. People think they're stupid. They're rather smart. I mean, how could wild turkeys exist and nest on the ground without having some sense? Um, I think they're extraordinary birds. Of course, Benjamin Franklin wanted them to be the national bird. Not so sure about that but they certainly are a great American bird to hold up. Um, and as you know, they've become a staple in this country during the holiday season. Now, what's so interesting about them is that they're really rather gentle. Um, they're not flighty and jumpy and they're not mean. A lot of people talk about how poultry can be mean. They're chased by a rooster and this sort of thing. Well, every once in a while that may happen, but we certainly know what happens to a turkey or a rooster with that kind of attitude around here. It goes in the noodle pot. All right, so here you go. Some wonderful examples of heritage breeds. All need conservation. We call them breeds with needs. And it would be marvelous if you would think about trying to protect a breed in some way. Join a conservation group or start a flock of these amazing birds yourself. Thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen, make sure you like it. And, and if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, don't be a turkey and do it. And we hope you'll come visit us here at Moss Mountain Farm sometime. All right? Very good.